Question with, Secretary uh, Holbrook, I apologize, but the Department of Justice now ready to brief reporters to Joey on that. We'll get back to our conversation momentarily. Today, to help the victims of this act of war find relief and to help the United States of America locate the people who are responsible for these terrible acts of war. Immediately after the first report of a plane crashing into the World Trade Towers, numerous federal agencies coordinating with the White House mobilized their resources. Throughout the day, secure video conferences took place among the National Security Council, the Department of Justice, the Department of State, the Department of Defense, the Department of the Treasury, FEMA, CIA, the FAA and other federal agencies. Both the President and the Vice President presided over a number of cabinet and sub-cabinet meetings and video conferences. Continuity of government plans were put into effect. Within the Department of Justice, our full resources were put into operation immediately. As I will explain in greater detail in a few moments, these resources have been deployed both to investigate this act of war and to assist victim survivors and victim families. But let me stress that this is not simply a Department of Justice effort. The response of the federal government across the board has been, I believe, from the President of the United States to the rescue workers magnificent. I'll now turn to the information that the response we have been making has developed. I'll give you the information that we can give you. However, we will give you only facts that we can confirm. You may be hearing things that we have not told you, but some people have the luxury of speculating. We won't speculate, but we'll only give you confirmed facts. And also, we must be careful to protect confidential intelligence sources and the methods of our intelligence so we do not compromise this ongoing investigation or the capacity of this nation to undertake such investigations as this. The four planes were hijacked by between three and six individuals per plane using knives and box cutters, and in some cases, making bomb threats. Our government has credible evidence that the White House and Air Force One were targets. A number of the suspected hijackers were trained as pilots in the United States. The Department of Justice has undertaken perhaps the most massive and intensive investigation ever conducted in America. The full resources of the FBI, the Justice Department's Criminal Division, the U.S. Attorney's Offices, the INS, and other components have been brought to bear and will be focused in this endeavor. Throughout the day and into the night last night, Deputy Attorney General Larry Thompson and Assistant Attorney General Michael Chertoff, who is not with us at this moment, and I were present at the FBI's Strategic Information and Operations Center, together, of course, with the Director and a number of other individuals. The Justice Department is working closely with investigators, the FAA, and the intelligence community, including the CIA, the NSA, the Defense Intelligence Agency, and the Defense Department. Numerous agencies have assigned personnel to the PSYOC at the FBI to coordinate investigative efforts so that information which is received on these premises becomes immediately available to the cooperating agencies. And uh, I might add that we reciprocate with similar uh, deployments in a variety of other settings. The Justice Department's Terrorism and Violent Crime Section is coordinating the response of the U.S. Attorney's offices nationwide. 
These agencies have a presence at the SIOC here in the FBI 24 hours a day and are coordinating efforts both in the United States and worldwide around the clock. Investigators are reviewing intelligence and have received numerous credible leads. Command posts have been established at all crime scenes. Evidence response teams and the FBI's disaster squad have been deployed to the crash sites. The recovery of bodies and the collection of evidence is ongoing at the Pentagon and at the crash site in Somerset County, Pennsylvania. Investigators are working with the National Transportation Safety Board to recover the black boxes from the crash sites. The crime scene at the WTC has been secured, but is not yet a crime scene accessible to investigators. The United States Attorney's Office's terrorism units and the FBI's Joint Terrorism Task Forces are obtaining the passenger manifests, rental car receipts, telephone logs, videotape from parking garages, and pay telephone uh, videotape records at all scenes for review and appropriate follow-up interviews. All investigative resources of the FBI's laboratory and crisis response capabilities have been mobilized. Now let me turn uh, this podium over to FBI Director Bob Mueller to talk more about the investigation itself. Thank you, uh, uh, Mr. Attorney General. I want to start by uh, saying that the men and women of the FBI join the nation in expressing our deep sympathies for the victims of these horrific tragedies uh, and their families. And we, uh, all of us in the FBI, pledge to those directly affected by these attacks that we will leave no stone unturned in our quest to help find those responsible and to bring those individuals to justice. Let me turn, if I could, for a moment to uh, the effort that we have undertaken at the FBI uh, to uh, investigate uh, these tragedies. Early uh, after the planes uh, starting, started to uh, fall yesterday, as soon as we heard that there was a particular city that was either a city of origin for a flight or a city such as New York where a flight went in, we established command posts. We have at those command posts and at a number of offices around the country where there are leads, more than 4,000 special agents who are assigned to assist this investigation, 4,000 special agents and 3,000 support personnel. We have over 400 of our laboratory personnel deployed at the crime scenes uh, in New York City, uh, south of Johnstown in Pennsylvania and at the Pentagon. And we anticipate this level of resource commitment will, com will continue for the immediate future. In the last 24 hours, we have been addressing two objectives. The first objective is to determine identify the hijackers on each of the plane, each of the planes. Having identified the hijackers on each of the planes, we then have sought to identify any of their associates remaining in the United States. Our first effort is to identify any associates in the United States who might be related to the hijackers and to remove those associates, investigate, and uh, arrest, given the evidence, those individuals, and to remove any threat to the air system in the future. That is our first objective. The second objective is to gather any and all evidence we have as to whom assisted the hijackers, and not only in this country, but also uh, overseas. We have, in the last 24 hours, 
taken the manifests and used those as an, evident, as an evidentiary base and have talked to many of the families of the victims and have successfully, I believe, identified many of the hijackers on each of the four flights that went down. We also have identified through a number of leads, principally at the cities of origin, a number of individuals whom we believe may have had something to do with the hijackings, and we are pursuing those leads aggressively. <laughs> Let me conclude at this juncture by emphasizing again the FBI's total and unwavering commitment to this investigation. We will not stop, and as I said before, we will leave no stone unturned until we have determined who was responsible for these attacks on our freedom. Now, I would be happy to entertain questions, as I'm sure the Attorney General would. Sir, have, have there been any arrests of any of these associates that you've identified in the now, I understand that, uh, that there is reporting out there that the FBI has made arrests with regard to the hijacking. That is not accurate. Uh, there have been occasions where we have interviewed individuals and come to find that the individual is out of status, and that individual uh, has been uh, detained on an immigration hold. But there have been no arrests relating to these hijackings at this point. Um, talk to you and people that you've identified. Are these people that have been under FBI's watch in the past? relating to other kinds of terrorism activities and people who you are familiar with? As we identify names, there may be one or more individuals with whom we have uh, information as to involvement with uh, individual uh, terrorist groups. We've seen activity today in Boston, Rhode Island, and in Southern Florida. Can you walk us through, in any of these cases, and give us any guidance on why these particular individuals have been uh, uh, stop and what the FBI is doing? Uh, we have uh, in Boston, uh, my understanding also in Providence and also in uh, Miami, we have leads indicating uh, the presence at some point in time of either the hijackers themselves, and we are attempting to recreate the, the uh, travels of each of the hijackers on the planes, either the hijackers themselves or their associates. And consequently, we, were following, we are following all leads with interviews, uh, with search warrants, uh, and whatever investigative techniques are necessary to obtain the evidence. Can I ask you another question? I've got, they've got to get to the White House for a meeting. How many? How many, how many, how many, how many, how many associates, Mr. Mueller, do you, do you think? And how uh, many were workers at the airport? I can't give you a definitive number on the associates. Can you, can you link this well, to Osama bin Laden? Thank you very much. FBI Director Robert Mueller, along with Attorney General John Ashcroft, was speaking with reporters a relatively brief briefing on the current status of the investigation underway. Mr. Ashcroft talking about investigating the act of war against the United States. Some of the information that, that they've given in terms uh, of uh, new material really isn't all that new to those people who've been watching a lot of television. Uh, Mr. Ashcroft was saying uh, three to six individuals involved per airplane, knives, box cutters, uh, in some cases making bomb threats, and uh, noting that the United States does have credi credible evidence that the White House and Air Force One were targets at least at some point, and that some of those uh, involved were trained as pilots in the United States. They also said that a uh, number of efforts are being made to try to recreate the travels of those suspected of being involved, including looking at passenger manifests, phone records, security camera videotapes, that sort of thing. Following up 